production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, supporting arts, advancing culture, and connecting the community to artists, events, and classes at columbusmakesart.com. From these contributing sponsors and viewers like you, thank you. This time on Broad and High, meet a ceramic artist who creates his large-scale work in a barn in rural Ohio. Learn how to make a sweet treat in the latest installment of Kate's Quick Bites. And hear the bold and powerful music of a local musician. This and more right now on Broad and High. Welcome to Broaden High. I'm your host, Kate Quickle. Tom Radka is a ceramic artist whose studio is in a barn in rural Ohio. His work is known for its depth of color and trademark large scale. We visited him and talked about the pottery process that he spent years perfecting. I am going to make a plate, intentionally collapse it, and throw it over this metal dish over here. <clears throat> and you see the big rolling pin? And then I'm going to alter the form with a rolling pin. So that is now 25 pounds of clay. This little tool is called the strong arm and it helps save my wrist. It even has a feature that will open this up for me. I have to have plenty of water for this vase. If there's an air bubble, you could have it in its second firing, and don't you know, that's when it pops. So as I flatten it down, I'm making sure that I don't go too far, because then it collapses. I want this to collapse when I want it to collapse, and that allows me to do, make the kind of plate that I want to make. And then, <clears throat> collapse it, and then throw it on. And this was my way of altering to get more of a Dale Chihuly form than just a regular plate. The Asian aesthetic is, means a lot to me because I've had four exhibitions in Bangkok and one on the island of Phuket. And I used to go to the basement of the Cleveland Museum all the time where they had the best Asian collection. Just the, the subtleness of it, you know? I guess that's what mainly attracted me. And so when I got out of the military, went to Kansas State, did the functional pots, then to Columbus, started making the big pieces. I said, I, got, I have to capture that Asian aesthetic. And it all started. I mean, I, I don't really know exactly that day, but it's what I strive for. So I'm doing an art festival at Boston Mill Ski Resort in Peninsula, Ohio. My friend's name is Jack Beecham. And he, he sees that most people make a 25 inch in diameter plate. It's got some kind of a rise to it, but I'm wanting them to be as flat as possible. So Jack says, well, if you like flat work, why don't you work with tiles? About a year before COVID hit, my friend Bob Christie brought me over a bunch of blue liquor bottles. He says, you want these? I said, I don't know, put them over there. Started breaking them, putting them on top of the tiles. So it's tile, glaze, glass. And the glaze is the fus fusing agent between the clay and the glass. The glass part of my work kind of took over. Well, when I look at it, it's the same kind of fascination I have for a blown glass piece. Too darn bad, I, the tile couldn't be translucent and you could look through the tile through the glass and have that effect. But it, it's, it's 
close enough because with good lighting on it, people think it's glass. They say, so this is glass, huh? No, it's clay with glass uh, fused to the surface. Okay, so this is a good example of the Asian influence. This is the unfinished circle, and over there in Thailand, or maybe all of Asia, it means good luck. But I wanted to do something a little different, not just to use a big brush to create these black marks, but I got little pieces of uh, blue bottles, and I put them in there, because I also wanted, to look, I wanted it to look a, a little celestial. And that's why this piece looks like the way it does. Pretty good firing. Oh, we got some copper reds today. Well, every time we fire, <clears throat> we never know if we're gonna get red. Because green is easy, just keep the oxygen in the kiln. But to get red, you need to pull the oxygen out. So we stuff the, um, the, the burner port with wood, oak. Um, it burns hot, it burns long, and that's how this one became a red plate. What I liked about this one also is before I turned it upside down on that metal form, I did the swirl mark here. And um, those are always intriguing to me. So you see, this is why I like to alter the plates. I get these beautiful swirl marks and then it fills in the, uh, the, the middle aqua. When people walk into the booth, and what it gives me a thrill, they turn around and say, can we touch? And I say, yeah. And uh, they were looking at it for 10, 15 minutes and they say, turn to me and they say, you know, we're having a difficult time picking out our favorite tile here because they're all so different. It's one cohesive piece as you step back 10 foot, but as you come up on it, they really look like, especially the glass pieces look like geodes. for the signature. To see more of his work, check him out at TomRadka.com. Just in time for Valentine's Day, we head back into the kitchen to make a sweet chocolatey treat and to learn more about a Columbus institution whose students unleash their creative power to shape culture and commerce. Hello, with me today on this installment of Kate's Quick Bites is Melanie Korn from the Columbus College of Art and Design. Hi Melanie, thanks for being here. Hi, thank you, I'm so excited to be here. Me too. So why don't you tell me something about CCAD that not everybody knows? That's a great question. Well, <laughs> so people may know that we're right next to Columbus State Community College under the big art sign, but what they may not know is that we were founded in 1879 by five women. Whoa! Yes, so that's a pretty amazing fact, over 140 years old, and for that last 140 plus years, we've been really leading the arts community and the education community through the CCAD way, mm -hmm. which is intentional inclusivity, that's about who we are, creative collaboration, which is about what we do, and proven potential, and that's about all of our alumni success. If you have seen anything creative, you've probably seen something that our alumni have a hand in. Pretty much any animated movie. I know you have a four-year-old, yep. so you probably watch a lot of those. I do. CCAD alumni are making most of them. Amazing. And everything else, too. Our alumni are working in large corporations. They're entrepreneurs here in Columbus. Our alumni are involved in founding uh, Yellow Brick Pizza, oh, wow. Seven Sun Brewery, oh my gosh. High Bank Distillery. So like community favorites. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's not just visual arts that they end up doing. They do a lot of amazing things and we're lucky to have them, I know. Yeah, that's an important distinction. Really yeah. that sort of art is everywhere Absolutely. really is true. Wonderful. Well, I'm so excited to learn more about CCAD, but I'm also excited to learn about this chocolate situation <laughs> in front of us. Today we're going to be doing a molten chocolate lava cake. 
Um, and part of the reason I love it is because it seems very fancy. Mm -hmm. It does. I was a little intimidated. Right. But it's not. So I am now too busy to cook and bake most of the time. You don't say. <laughs> I know. I know. But, <laughs> but this is a great recipe because you can make it really fast. Mm -hmm. um, it looks fun and fancy if you're having a din dinner party. Um, even better, you can make it ahead of time. Ooh, I love that. And then you can stick it in the fridge and ready to bake whenever you're ready to oh bake it. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. Yeah. I can't wait to get started. All right, let's do it. The ingredients we'll need are four ounces of semi-sweet baking chocolate, a half a cup of butter, one cup of powdered sugar, two eggs, two egg yolks, and six tablespoons of flour. Okay, so what's the first step to get started? So first thing we do is preheat the oven to 425. I think that's already been done. Yep. And then we butter the ramekins or souffle dishes, and that's been done as well. Okay, great. So then are we getting started with the chocolate? That's what's next. Mm. So next step is to chop up the chocolate. Okay. And then we'll get it into the double boiler. Yes. Is that how you typically do it? Well, so you can use the double boiler uh, at home, which is basically just a pot of water and then a metal bowl on top. Um, so that the, the hot water and the steam will melt the chocolate and butter. Um, or the way I like to do it sometimes at home is just a microwave. So you ah, can do yes. that as well. Um, easy just to heat it up for about a minute in the microwave, the chocolate and the butter together. Is that yep. good? That's, That's perfect. Okay. That's great. So just sort of. So we'll dump that into in there. our nice warm double boiler. Perfect. Get it all in there. Great. And then we'll add the butter. Get in there, friends. Okay. <laughs> and then we'll just whisk that up. Here we go. All right. So we just kind of keep stirring it, whisking it here until it gets all melty. Okay. Oh, it's already starting. Yep. Um, why don't you tell me about this new collaboration I've heard a little bit about? Yeah. So with a generous grant from JP Morgan Chase, CCAD is partnering with Zora's House. Zora's House is a community organization, a co-working space, and a group that um, works on kind of entrepreneurial startups, uh, particularly for women of color. Mm -hmm. Women of color are the largest uh, growing group here in Franklin County. Mm -hmm. uh, and too often, they're left out of the core conversations of right. social justice and politics and culture that are impacting them. Um, so with help from the Women's Fund and the Urban League, CCAD and Zora's House together are creating a new um, equity design institute for women of color. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, so this is going to be a really great opportunity. The first cohort is sort of a pilot, and it's going to be uh, teaching women of color how to use design strategy, design thinking skills uh, for equity. Mm -hmm. And they'll be doing a collaborative project together. Uh, and really, it's about providing them skills so that they can be at the center of these conversations that right. are greatly impacting them. And again, if all goes well, uh, then we will continue this uh, sort of certificate program in future years too. And That's amazing. Lots of folks can take advantage of it. Wow, what incredible resources you're providing for the community. So what do we do now that it's kind of coming right. together? What's the next step? Yes. So coming together, pretty much melted here. So again, not hot on the edges. So we can just take it right off okay. there. We'll set it here and then we can just use the same bowl. Mm -hmm. So next we're going to add our one cup of powdered sugar. Okay, right. It goes right in? Yep. Just okay. dump that right in and then we'll whisk that in. Oh, beautiful. All right. And Doing the powdered sugar first also will help cool it a little bit because mm. you don't want to add your eggs you don't scramble. right away. Yeah. Scrambled eggs in chocolate, never super no. delicious. All right, so then once that's incorporated, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be perfect because again, you're going to do more mixing. Okay. Uh, but then you can go ahead and add your eggs. So you've got two whole eggs and two egg yolks. Why is that? Well, I think the egg yolks help make it extra kind of fudgy and moist. Yeah. Here we go. Dump two those in. whole eggs. Great. Followed I'll keep mixing those in. Two egg yolks for richness. Yep. We've decided. <laughs> so as soon as we get the eggs incorporated, give it a little bit of that moisture back. Yeah. Then we will just add in the six tablespoons of flour. Okay. There we go. All right. Go ahead. Dump that flour okay. in. Flour coming in. Okay. It's so few ingredients. It's real it simple. Really is. It's so easy. And then you can just make sure you get that well mm -hmm. incorporated. And then again, it doesn't have to be over mixed or anything. It's very just, simple. Yeah. Just till it's all together. So we can come right over here. Yep. Okay. It may get a little messy, but that's all right. That's all right. Messy and delicious. How about about how full? Halfway. So about three quarters, okay. probably ultimately. It's important for this dish to not get it overcooked because the whole point is oh, you yeah. want your inside nice and melty. Gooey. 
and gooey. They will puff up a little bit, but not a ton because they are pretty dense. Yeah. Um, because the ins the the middle will be still hopefully melty. Yeah. And molten. Mm hmm That's the name. <laughs> name of the game. And that will do it. Okay. And then from there, your oven should be ready by now. Mm -hmm. Pop them in the oven, and then we'll bake them. You know, about 12 minutes. Okay, not too long at Let's all. See what happens. Should we go ahead and put them in the oven? I think so. Okay. Here we go. In they go. All right, well, while those delicious chocolatey cakes are baking in the oven, why don't you tell me about some ways that community members can experience CCAD outside of earning a degree there? Yes, absolutely. So there are so many ways that the community can get involved with CCAD. So first of all, in addition to our degree granting classes, we have a lot of community education classes. We've been offering Saturday morning art classes for over 100 years. Um, Saturday morning art classes are great for kids, but we also have adult Saturday morning art classes. We also have a lot of other kid programming in the summer, so um, summer camp style, creative summer workshops, a college preview course where uh, high school juniors and seniors can come and actually stay in the residence hall oh, and nice. earn college credit, and that's really fun. Yeah. Um, but if you don't want to commit to a whole class, uh, you can come down and come to one of our many free lectures. We have a lot of artists and designers and other intellectuals come and talk at the college. Uh, we have a wonderful gallery, Beeler Gallery, mm -hmm. that's always free and open to the public. Um, we have a lot of other bigger events too. So twice a year we do a big art fair. Mm -hmm. This is a great art sale of student and alumni work, so everyone should come check that out. And of course the fashion show. Yes, the fashion show. Yes, the fashion show is a hit always. Mm -hmm. It's our big uh, sort of gala um, where all of our senior fashion designers get to actually have their looks on the runway. Mm -hmm. Real New York style yeah. runway show. It's pretty fantastic. That's an incredible yeah. opportunity. Well great, it just sounds like there's so many ways for people to get involved that they may not have been aware of. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, CC CCAD um, is too often referred to as a hidden gem, mm. uh, and I want to make sure it's no longer it's hidden. It's a visible gem. <laughs> exactly. It's a big shining gem of the city, uh, right under the 100 foot tall art sign. So Can't miss it. Can't miss it. Come check us out. Okay, this whole kitchen smells heavenly like chocolate. <laughs> Our cakes are out of the oven. They look beautiful. Yes, thank you. Here they are. And so, yeah, 12 minutes, and then you got these lovely little cakes. And I just want to dig in, but there's one more step. <laughs> one more step. You can dig in, but it might, you know, might, might be a little toasty. So what you're going to do is you're going to just take a butter knife or anything and just kind of, you know, gently loosen around the edges. That'll just help you get it out. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And then, um, ideally with a towel or a hot pad or something so mm -hmm. you don't burn yourself, grab your little bowl. You're going to invert it here into a, a, a dish. Flip. Flip. And pray. And then, yes, there we go. Look at that. Look at it. After you've done that, then you can um, you can just eat it as is. You can put some ice cream on it, some whipped cream, some berries, whatever you want on your little chocolate cake. Last step, taste them. Dig in. Okay, you gotta have got a bite, a right? Fork. Here you go. Okay, don't burn yourself. Okay, they are hot. But yes, if you kind of just like get a little poke it. Oh yeah, look at that molten. Look at that. Mm. Mm. Oh, Yum. this is like my dream dessert. Okay, a little bite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. Mm-hmm. 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 That's incredible. It's heavenly. It's it does delicious. need ice cream. We're gonna go put <laughs> ice cream on this. It's Hot, perfect. Yummy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yep. Thanks so much for being here and Thank teaching you. me this. This was a lot of fun. I really mm -hmm. appreciate it. Of Thanks course. for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. To learn more about the Columbus College of Art and Design, visit ccad.edu. Musician Sam Craighead puts a unique twist on everyday thoughts and interactions in his work. We hosted him recently for a Broad and High Presents session. Let's take a listen.
summertime Bugs coming out I get paranoid Coming into my house And now Paranoid And even feeling it out When I talk to you Really put a foot in my mouth But I'm reminded of another time Nothing happened If you ever get to sleep at night Tell me how Cause I can't get sleep so often Standing there Covered in ash Couldn't make a move Must be a catch Some kind of trick You can pull Pull the rug from right out Feel so stupid I ain't never coming out My house but I'm reminded of another time Nothing happened If you ever get to sleep at night Just tell me how Cause I can't get to sleep so often To hear more, check him out at samcraighead.com. Well, that's our show. Remember, you can find all of our stories online at wosu.org, as well as on our YouTube channel. For all of us here at WOSU, I'm Kate Quickle. Thanks for watching. Sitting in a chat room, trying to wait for you. Soon log on in private message. Talking group chat to all my friends went off to our school on our time to hang. I don't get that kind of homework at Columbus State. So I meet in people who live far away. I can borrow my desk
his car and drive across state lines. Book a bone bed in a hostel, visit friends online. Usually young, what you'd expect. The acting look different. So new, I just need some attention. Production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, supporting arts, advancing culture, and connecting the community to artists, events, and classes at columbusmakesart.com.